Have you just found out that your breast cancer is HER2 positive? Are you confused about all the different treatments available? Has anyone actually explained to you what it means? In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about HER2 positive breast cancer, Herceptin and all the other treatments available. I'm Dr. Liz O'Riordan. I'm a breast surgeon who's had breast cancer three times and I wrote the complete guide to breast cancer. I do the research so you don't have to. And as a bonus at the end, I'll talk about HER2 low breast cancers and the new research looking at treatment for stage four patients. What is HER2 positive breast cancer? Well, every breast cancer cell produces a protein called human epidermal growth factor receptor 2, or HER2 for short. One in five breast cancers express very high levels of HER2, and these are called HER2 positive breast cancers. What does the HER2 protein actually do? Well, it's a type of protein called a kinase, and it relays signals to a breast cell telling it to grow, divide, and repair itself. What does it mean if a breast cancer is HER2 positive? When a breast cancer cell has too many HER2 proteins, the cells start to grow and divide in an uncontrolled way. HER2 positive breast cancers tend to grow faster and without anti-HER2 treatments, they are more likely to spread and come back in the future compared to HER2 negative tumours. However, the introduction of drugs like Herceptin have completely revolutionised the prognosis of HER2 positive breast cancers. It's incredible. Herceptin drugs can halve the risk of a recurrence, making your chance of survival often greater than women and men who don't have HER2 positive breast cancer. There are so many new drugs now available to treat primary and advanced HER2 positive breast cancer that didn't exist 10 years ago. And there's even a trial looking at a vaccine to cure HER2 positive breast cancer. So the future has never looked brighter for people like you. How does your doctor know if your cancer is HER2 positive? Well, every breast cancer biopsy is tested for the HER2 receptor. The first test is called immunohistochemistry, where wafer-thin slices of the biopsy are stained with a special dye. This gives a score of 0, 1, 2 or 3. A score of 0 or 1 means that your cancer is HER2 negative. A score of 3 means that your cancer is HER2 positive. A score of 2 is a borderline result, and if this happens, another test is done which can take a week or so to get the results. This is called in situ hybridization or FISH, and this will confirm whether your cancer is HER2 positive or not. These tests give a result of HER2 positive, HER2 low or HER2 negative. How is HER2 positive breast cancer treated? Well, your cancer is treated the same as any other breast cancer with surgery to remove it, surgery to assess or remove the lymph nodes underneath your arm and radiotherapy if you need it. What's different is that for HER2 positive patients, all the anti-HER2 treatments you need have to be given with chemotherapy. What are the anti-HER2 drugs? There are three different categories of drugs, monoclonal antibodies, antibody drug conjugates, and kinase inhibitors, which all sound very complicated. So I'm going to go through them slowly in turn and explain what they do and who has them. Monoclonal antibodies. Herceptin and Pergetta are monoclonal antibodies. These are the drugs used to treat women and men with primary HER2 positive breast cancer that hasn't spread beyond the lymph nodes in your armpit. They are man-made versions of antibodies that are designed to attach to a target on a cell, in this case, the HER2 receptor protein on breast cancer cells. When they lock onto the HER2 receptor, they stop the breast cancer cells from growing. Herceptin. This is another name for trastuzumab and it also helps your immune system attack and destroy breast cancer cells. Pagetta. This is another name for pertuzumab and it locks onto a different part of the HER2 receptor protein from Herceptin. It's normally given together with Herceptin as a single injection called Fesgo. The first dose of Herceptin is given as an infusion into your vein over 30 to 60 minutes. After that, it's given as a small injection into the fat of your thigh and it takes five or eight minutes and some people can even do this at home. Fesgo is always given as an injection into your thigh. Who gets Herceptin, Pergetta and Fesgo? 
Now, before I start this bit, I just want to say that everything I mentioned is correct today. That's November 2023. But things are changing all the time. Trials are looking at giving Herceptin for shorter periods of time, months instead of a year, and new protocols could develop in the future. If they do, I'll come back and highlight them in this video. So, where were we? If you have a very small cancer, less than one centimetre, this means that your medical team have to weigh up the benefits of giving you treatments like Herceptin and chemotherapy against the small chance of your cancer coming back in the future. There are a lot of serious, often permanent side effects with these drugs, including heart problems that I'll talk about later. So your doctors will have to have a discussion to help you both decide what to do. If your tumour is also ER positive, you'll be given hormone blocking drugs as standard. See this video. If your cancer is between one and two centimetres in size, there is some benefit in giving you Herceptin and chemotherapy to reduce the risk of it coming back in the future. What your team might do is give you a lower dose of chemotherapy using just one drug instead of a combination. This means that the side effects are easier to handle. You'll have 12 weeks of chemotherapy and a year of Herceptin, Pageta or Fesgo after your surgery. If your cancer is larger than two centimetres or you have involved lymph nodes in your armpit, you will be given Fesgo and standard chemotherapy for five months before you have your surgery. The aim is to completely shrink your cancer so there is nothing left when your surgeon operates. This is called a pathological complete response or PCR. The Neosphere trial showed that Fesco increased the chance of this happening from 29 to 45% compared to Herceptin alone, and that's why we give the two drugs together. If you don't get a pathological complete response, you may be given one of the drugs I'm going to talk about in the next section. Now, if you found this video useful, remember to subscribe so you don't miss next week's. The second class of drugs are antibody drug conjugates. Gosh, that's a mouthful. All that means is they are a combination of two drugs, a monoclonal antibody, like Herceptin, that is attached to a chemotherapy drug. It's a bit like an arrow of Herceptin being fired into a breast cancer cell, taking the chemotherapy drug directly into it. And because normal healthy cells aren't affected, there are fewer side effects than traditional chemotherapy. The two commonly used drugs are Cadsila and NHER2. So Cadsila connects Herceptin to a chemotherapy drug called Emtansine. If you had chemotherapy and Herceptin before your surgery and there was still cancer left when you had your operation so you didn't have a PCR, you may be given Cadsila. What Cadsila does is reduce the chance of it coming back in the future. And it's also used to treat women with metastatic disease who have already had Herceptin treatment. NHER2 connects Herceptin to the chemotherapy drug Deruxtecan. Now you would get this if you have a HER2 positive cancer that can't be removed with surgery, like a bad locally advanced cancer, or if you have stage 4 disease and have already tried Herceptin. Kinase inhibitors. The third class of drugs are called kinase inhibitors. Now what these do is stop the HER2 protein working altogether. And there are three drugs, Ticurb, Tuckyser, and Nerlinx. So Ticurb, also known as Lapatinib, is used to treat stage four HER2 positive breast cancer. It blocks the HER2 receptor and another receptor called HER1. And it's normally given together with Herceptin and the chemotherapy drug Capacitabine and it comes as a tablet that you swallow. Takisa, I think I'm saying that right. This is also called tacatinib. Now this is used to, again to treat stage four HER2 positive breast cancer that has progressed on at least one other anti-HER2 drug. It's normally given together with Herceptin and Capcitabine and it also comes as a tablet that you take twice a day. Nerlinx is also known as neratinib. Now if you only had Herceptin and chemotherapy before your surgery, and you didn't get a PCR, then you might be given Nerlinx as well. It's also used to treat people with metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer together with capcitabine if you've had at least two other anti-HER2 drugs. Is there any reason why you might not get Herceptin treatment? If you are pregnant or breastfeeding, then you can't have Herceptin because the drug will harm your baby. You must use contraception during anti-HER2 treatment and for at least six months after your last dose of Herceptin. 
if you have heart problems, then you might not be able to have it because Herceptin can damage your heart. What are the side effects of anti-HER2 treatment? Well, most people tolerate Herceptin really well and serious side effects are relatively rare. You may feel like you've just had a mild dose of the flu for a day or two and you might get symptoms like aching muscles or a sore throat, feeling sick, losing your appetite, maybe a bit of diarrhea and feeling tired. But this normally eases with something like paracetamol. One of the rare reactions is an allergic reaction and around one in 20 people have this after their first treatment. Now, if this happens, your lips may swell, you may feel short of breath or develop a rash. You might also have a headache, dizziness or joint and muscle pains. Now, if this happens, you'll be given medication to control the reaction and you might need to be kept in hospital overnight. There is a risk of infection just like chemotherapy, all the anti-HER2 drugs lower your immune system and that means you're more likely to develop a serious infection. You'll be given information about what to do if your temperature goes up, what precautions to take, what to avoid and who to call if this happens to you. The big one is heart damage. Herceptin, Pajeta and Tyverb can cause an abnormal heart rhythm or weaken one of your heart muscles called the left ventricle. Now, this means that your heart can't pump blood as well as it did before and that can make you feel tired or breathless or like your heart is fluttering. Now one in five patients have mild heart damage and two in a hundred have serious long-term heart problems and it's more likely if you had heart problems before treatment such as a very high blood pressure although it can occur in previously fit people. Before you start Herceptin, you're screened with a heart scan. This will either be an echocardiogram or a multiple gated acquisition scan or a MUGA, M-U-G-A scan. This is normally repeated every couple of months and you may have it for up to two years after your last dose of treatment. If you do develop heart problems, they normally get better when treatment stops, although a very small number of people are left with permanent heart damage. And now for the bonus section, what about HER2 low breast cancers? So a large number of breast cancers scored as HER2 negative do actually have some HER2 proteins on the breast cancer cells. This means that a score of plus one or plus two, if you remember, you need a score of plus three to be counted as HER2 positive, may be suitable for HER2 treatments. We know that as many as 50% of all breast cancers could be HER2 low and there is now some trials of evidence to show that people with stage 4 HER2 low breast cancers may actually benefit from anti-HER2 drugs such as in HER2. This would mean that there's another line of treatment available for people like this and it's really exciting to see what's going to happen in the future. I'm Dr Liz Reardon. Thanks for watching my channel and remember to subscribe so you don't miss next week's video.